Hey there my friends, how are you? So what are we doing today? Today we're going to be doing a Diablo 3 Beginner's Guide. That's right, in this video we're going to outline all of the things that you should concentrate on, all of the things that you need to know as you're diving into this awesome game called Diablo 3. And all that's getting started right now. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Captain Nemo. Welcome to another Diablo video. I'm super pumped and super excited for this one. I know this game has been around for a long time, and I know that sometimes a lot of people are jumping into a game, and sometimes they get super intimidated. There are so many guides with so many different levels, so many high players and so on. I mean, this game has been out for a while. It's an amazing and fantastic game. So if you wanted to jump into it, if you wanted to get in, this right here is going to be a no-nonsense guide. Something that's not going to confuse you and make your head explode because, well, it did to me when I was watching some of these other guides. This one right here is going to be a bit more simple. Straight up, some of the things that you need to do to make sure that you enjoy and get all of the experience out of Diablo 3. Now, Diablo, a Blizzard game in general, they have a lot of depth right I've been playing Diablo I've been playing World of Warcraft is really amazing you know universe welcome to this awesome new world of Diablo right um, the more the merrier this is lovely so you're coming in here you're jumping in you got all these things going on there's acts there's seasons there's I mean if you haven't played a Blizzard game before it might even be a little crazier than you know if you have like if you have played World of Warcraft you are pretty uh, you pretty understand what's a dungeon what's a thing you know th those type of things so we're gonna outline how things work we're gonna we're gonna basically break down some of the things that you should definitely be doing when you first jump into Diablo how to power level things like that some of the tips and tricks that you need to make sure you get to the end game and start experiencing experiencing all the fun all the other things that I'm sure all of your other friends that have been playing Diablo are experiencing or maybe new friends that you're jumping in with this is super exciting I'm super pumped to be the one to hopefully bring this to you so let's get started and let me get into it right away all right so what do you do first the first thing that you do after you download the game you purchase it you get on the computer you get all excited oh my god here we go here we go diablo let me slay demons and monsters and destroy things well first and foremost you got to pick a character right you got to pick a class right so a class is there are seven different classes in diablo 3 and each one has got its own primary and secondary skills there's a whole bunch of other things that are going on in there let me actually you know what let me switch myself to this side so you can take a look if you see each each class has a specific skill right they have a primary attribute they have a specific uh things that they run they, basically it's a different type of feel and a different type of style so if you notice the barbarian is strength right the crusader is also strength you have a demon hunter who is a, de a dexterity a monk is a dexterity necromancer is intelligence along with the witch doctor and then the wizard right so those are the three different uh there are seven different classes that you can pick each one's got his own play style they got their own little flavor it depends on what you like to do are you the kind of person that likes to get in there melee attack smash blast you know do all that type of stuff where you're doing a bunch of melee with hammers and swords and things like that and getting into the action and just beating things down or are you the kind of person that likes to sit back a little bit and do some range dps attacks to where you're shooting back from specific places and making sure that you stay away from you know all the madness in the center are you a tank are you a dps do you know what that means uh, you know a tank is a person that has a lot of armor someone that can take all of the heat while the dps or damage per second the people behind you are the ones that are going to be shooting and damaging all of the all of the, the armies and armies and foes and craziness that you're going to be facing out there in the, uh, you know, in the underworld. So you have to pick what kind of a flavor you like. So a barbarian, a crusader is more of a tank. You know, you have a demon, uh, demon hunter is more of DPS along with the monk. Then you have the necromancer, the witch and doctor and the wizard who, who are more of intelligence. They have a whole, I mean, all the classes are amazing. Honestly, it's really up to you what you should do because what happens is you're going to create a class and then afterwards you're going to have to level them up and make sure that you get them all the way up to the highest level right so there's a lot of work there's a lot of grinding involved so watch some videos watch some videos of different classes take a look and see what kind of play style you like and it's going to be the same you know with other games that you play if you're a slasher or you're a gps person really that type of stuff but once you pick a character you can pick from one of these seven classes you pick which one you like the most you research them all that stuff information is right there then you're going to pick whether it's a male or or a female i tried each each class can be a male or a female crusader barbarian it doesn't matter you pick which one you want makes no difference right it's all up to you and then afterwards you of course have to pick a name for your hero so that's where you put you know you name the hero whatever you want and that's going to be a name that's going to stay with him you can't change it so make sure you keep it 
um, make sure that you like it. Right. So then afterwards, you also have two options here. You have a hardcore hero and then a seasonal hero. So what's a seasonal hero? A quick little thing. A seasonal hero is basically Diablo has something called seasons. It's really awesome. Every season, there's specific new gear sets and things that you can do. There are basically uh, there are bounties. There are a bunch of tasks that you can do. And if you go and complete those tasks, you get specific gear. Now gear is shared across all of your characters. So you can create multiple characters. You can be a barbarian. You can be a crusader. You can be a demon hunter and all of these characters share your stash of gear and things so you can basically switch between them right so if you get specific things from one character your other characters can wear it so what this means is every season you would have to start a new character and basically play and do all of those specific tasks to get all the things that they talk about um in you know in the patch notes right now what happens with a seasonal character? The seasonal character at the end of the season becomes a regular character, so you have nothing to, to lose there at all. It actually, it's only the gain. The only difference is if somebody has a non-seasonal character, let's say if me, and I have my non-seasonal character right here, right? I play with him, whatever, and we want to play together and you create a seasonal character, we're not going to be able to play until the season is over. That is the only difference. But if you are basically, let me not blow your mind, if you are creating a new character, if you are creating a new character and you're not going to play with your friends who have an old character, you definitely want to create a seasonal one. The reason is because all of the extra stuff that you would get for just leveling up your character during that season, you will get if it's a seasonal character. You're only going to miss out on things if you do not check the seasonal box when you're creating a character. So my, my opinion and my advice to you make sure you create a seasonal character and level them up because it's extra rewards and extra things that you could just get so you pick a class you pick whether it's going to be a seasonal or non-seasonal character you pick a name what's hardcore hardcore is <laughs> crazy Hardcore is basically like real life. You create a character, you start leveling them up. Sometimes it takes months of gear of, of grinding, right? It could take forever. Well, a hardcore character, when they die, they just die. That's right, they disappear from the game. Everything that they have with them, you lose. So a hardcore character, you could be grinding for months, for years, and at the end of the day, if, if something happens and your character dies, you will lose them and you will have to start from all over again. So it's very important, that's a big disclaimer right there. If you create a hardcore character, make sure you realize as soon as they die you start from zero from scratch that character is going to be gone and you're going to have to create them all over again so let's move on to some next stuff as you think about what's going to be your character name what's going to be your character class whether you're going to do hardcore or not and all that you know let's let's move on to the next thing all right, so you created a character, you got it all set. All right, so what's the deal now? Game settings. Let me explain quickly the game settings to you. There's a campaign mode. There's three, there's a bunch of different modes and there's a campaign mode. There's an adventure mode and then there's a challenge rift mode. That's like a challenge mode, everybody calls. So campaign mode, that's something that's going to be open to you right away when you start the game, right? That's just going to have to, you have to jump in there and do that. Now campaign is very simple in Diablo and other Blizzard games. If you've never played a Blizzard game before, uh, campaign is the beginning of the game. Uh, from here, it's a level 0 to 70 so that means you have to level up your character from level 0 to level 70 by doing storyline missions and that's nice and simple you just follow the story and it will take you from places and you'll have to complete the missions and beat the bosses and go through cinematic things and all of that super exciting and awesome and gives you the Diablo story and all of that behind it so you kind of grind go through beat the story and you know complete it and as you beat the story you're gonna level up and get things and so forth when you complete the campaign mode that's when the game really starts in all the Blizzard games, 0 through 70 is basically your leveling up mode. Once you get to 70, you get to sort of what's called a max level, and that's when your grind starts. That's when other, thing, the other things open up. For example, this adventure mode. That opens up. In the adventure mode, there are a lot of things you can do. Now, before I get into that, there's also many different difficulty levels for a Diablo. That's a really a cool thing about Diablo. There are so many diff uh, difficulty levels, right? So you start off with a regular normal Diablo, right? And then you go to, there's 16 difficulty levels. I mean, you can go all the way up. Really, you pick which one you're more comfortable with. If you've never played or whatever else, it's really not about how good of a player you are. The higher the difficulty, the more gear you have to have. The, the stronger the enemies are and all that, it doesn't matter how good you are. 
if you go to to higher difficulty uh, you're gonna get smoked you're gonna get smoked because the enemies are stronger because you're not geared for that you're not ready for that level you progress through the game and gear up and get better items and uh, enchant things and get all kinds of better things and strong you basically grow your strength your vitality all of your stats slowly with the gear that you select and all of that and that's how you can face harder and harder difficulties until of course you get all the way to the to the highest difficulty and that right here is torment 16 that is the highest difficulty in the game for whatever you're playing right so choose wisely i would start with the lowest when you start normal or hard really it's up to you i would start right there so as you do that you start playing the game you start and you progress through the game you start doing all that stuff and you beat the game you get to the end now here's a little tip for you if you are going through the game and you know it's taking you a little while one of the good ways one of the fast ways that you can power level have you heard of power leveling let me explain that one to you so as we watch this gameplay let me explain to you what is power leveling right power leveling is basically when you get some i mean an, a good way to do this a really fast way to basically skip weeks and weeks even month of grinding is to get a friend someone who is super high level to take you through and power level with you basically what happens is they pick the highest level of difficulty they pick specific things specific places like there's a uh, certain levels and places like that that will really power level you really high you can do uh, well, you're not going to be able to do any greater rifts because you haven't beat the game yet. You're not going to be able to do even rifts because I haven't beat the game yet, right? But they can get you to specific levels, like there's a secret cow level and so many other ones. That they can jump you in and you can run through, run behind them, stay way behind them. And they can protect you and as they run through, you're just going to level up. And honestly, you can probably get to max level and save yourself months and months of grinding within maybe one night. That's right, a few hours and you can get to level 70 nice and easy you get to level 70 so at level 70 that's when the, the game begins that's when all of the modes open up and you can start doing things right and what kind of things can you be doing well you could do rifts right what a rift rift is an end game type of thing for blizzard there's something called a dungeon or a rift right for wow it's dungeon for here it's a rift basically it's once you beat the game once you get to level 70 then you start doing all kinds of different upgrades there's gear upgrades you're gonna have to start grinding for legendaries for specific gems there are so many upgrades that you're gonna have to get. There's legendaries, there's ancient legendaries, there's primal gear, right? The higher you go, the higher. And I mean, these are really, really hard to get. Some of these have one in 400 chance of rolling if you're doing a greater rift or a rift or something like that. Now, as far as rifts, what's a rift or a greater rift? It's simple, it's a dungeon. Something that you can play with four players, yourself, by yourself, or with four other players, and where you fight monsters, right? The idea is that you go through, you go into the special level, you get in and you start fighting monsters. Once you beat all of the monsters within the game, the specific number of them, it unlocks this guardian, this boss. You take the boss down, you beat him, and then you get a whole bunch of rewards. What kind of rewards? You get everything. You get gold, you get treasure, you get all kinds of diamonds and all kinds of different rubies and stones that you need to enchain your weapons with. You get specific, maybe even legendary weapons and so on and so forth. So as you get higher and higher, more and more gear starts dropping more and more things starts going and you're gonna have to progress that way if you can power level and get somebody to get you to jump 70 and then from there you can move on that's great if you can't you're gonna have to grind yourself and beat the game until you get to 70 now when you get to level 70 and beat the game at that point as I said the game opens up right so what do you do what happens well you could start doing rifts one of the important things that you have to do is a rift right you have to beat a rift in order to unlock specific things and then you also have to beat a greater rift right you actually have have to be the greater rift by yourself by yourself in order to be able to start doing other things in the game and as you as you complete these little challenges and missions you'll see zoltan cool zoltan cool is a guy who's going to tell you to go get a kanai's cube now I'm going to give you a brief description on Kanai's Cube. I'll give you a brief description on Greater Rifts. I made detailed videos about both. If you want to know, like a beginner's guide to Kanai's Cube, what that is and what you can do with it, I'll link that above at the end of this video. Definitely make sure you check that one out because that's gonna that's a really good video. It explains to you what's Kanai's Cube. You're definitely going to want to check that one out and see what you have to do once you're ready and once you get to that part. Same thing with the rifts. If you want to know what's a rift, a greater rift, an empowered rift, a challenge rift, you want to know how to get into a rift, you want to see people rifting and all that, video up top at the end of this one. I, I made that as well, so you can check that one out, all about rifting. 
how to do a rift, grade a rift, and so on. But basically, the simple idea is you're gonna have to do a rift to get a ticket or a key to do a greater rift. A greater rift is something that gets you a whole bunch of gear. So at the end, once you beat the game, once you complete the storyline and get to level 70, that's when you start going up levels, right? That's when you start going up something called Paragon levels. Paragon is a blue little thing right there on the top. If you look at my um, my character right there on the left, or Rigby's character, he has 1248. I have a 183 at that point. That's our Paragon levels. That's a level that you get above 70. And that basically measures your strength. The higher you get in Paragon level, you get specific Paragon points. And what are Paragon points? It's just extra stats. Those are the points that you can select and create for your profile to make your character stronger in strength, in movement, in dexterity, in intelligence, and in a bunch of different things. There's so many different like, cooldown reductions and so on and so forth. It's basically something that you want to go and move as high as you can to get to max out your character. The idea of Diablo is to make sure that you get your stats to the highest because those are the people that can do the craziest greater rifts and challenge rifts and all that. And what is that? That's a leaderboard for Diablo. That's right. The game opens up. There are so many other things that you can do once you beat the game and get to 70, right? You could do rifts. You could do greater rifts. You could do challenge rifts. You could do leaderboards. It was really cool. You could do bounties. And then there's something called seasons. So what's a season? I'm so excited. I, I, I'm not even going to stop. A season is basically every so often Diablo releases a specific season. There is a season of nightmares. There's a whole bunch of different seasons right and each one of these seasons has specific gear sets and this gear set gives you small alterations to your character so let's say for example you really like barbarian you love playing with the barbarian and then one season they release specific set of gear that if you wear this gear the barbarian gets this other cool thing that is the only way you can do it is by wearing this gear. And that can change the game, right? A little small stat, but the way this game works, there are so many other stats that are relying on the stats. There's cooldowns, there's multipliers, and all this. So they can really affect other things and can get barbarians to be like the best in the game. Then you see all of the people running around trying to get this barbarian, trying to get this stat at it because they can go and clear raids and do, you know, be a god in this game, right? There's those things. And then, you know, you have seasonal gear sets that de depend on each other. So you have to wear two two pieces of the gear to get a specific super cool thing or you have to wear three pieces or four pieces to unlock a specific other skill that you can do or things like that you make things really interesting there's bounties there's other things there's a lot of content that you can do every season to get the specific gear sets and the only way to get it is to do those things and if you don't do them then you're never going to be able to get those sets and those are the green sets um in your in your gear there's a legendary there's an orange and then you have your green sets that you you, you know you need to look for so that is seasons, right? And that changes all the time. So it keeps the things interesting and moving along. So as you're going through, you play seasons, you beat the game, you start doing rifts. You do rifts to get into greater rifts. Why do you want to do greater rifts? Because greater rifts is the end game. That's where all of the top players play. That's where you can get on the leaderboards, be the best in the world, right? To go in and, and, and build your character, get the specific gear that you want, start adjusting it and spending all kinds of time making sure that you get the gear to be perfect set to the way you like it and your rings and your amulets and all of your boots and your gear and all of the rest of your weapons and all of the things to play with it in the gym gems and enchantment gems and legendary gems and all the multipliers and all that stuff on top of it and you get this guy and he's completely amazing and it's the best character that you want you're ready to go rip apart demons you get in with your friends with three or four of them you know four total get in there and start doing these crazy raids where you start blasting demons and getting through the highest levels and making sure that you get to the top of the leaderboards and be awesome and glorious. this is really awesome yeah it's really exciting let me stop. <laughs> so what do I, I love this game, right? I love this game. So but before you do all that, before you get to the greater rifts and the highest greater rifts, because they're actually timed, and the challenge rifts and all of that, get into gear sets and seasonal stuff and whatever, you got to start the game. You got to make sure that you do all of the things that I told you about. And it's very important to, go, for example, to go get a Kanai's Cube, right? Let me give you some of the higher level of things. Like for you, you started the game, you started playing, you beat it. You, you got to the end game, you got to seven, you somebody power leveled you, you got there, you grinded it, whatever it is, you're now good to go and you got some gear, right? You got legendary pieces of gear. You maybe even have a few ancient legendaries, right? You're done with the blues and the, and the yellows. You got all that. Well, so what do you do? 
how do you grind and get through and get stronger and get bigger, right? So let me give you a couple of pointers and a couple of tips that you want to make sure that you do when you're running in Diablo 3 and you beat the game. All right, so you beat the game. You, you got you got the Kanai's cube. You want to follow the guy. You look at my video. You got a Kanai's cube. There it is right here. You're ready to go. You got the rifts and the greater rifts and all that. Okay, so what do you do? What do you have to do? Well, so first and foremost, let's talk about a few things, right? Let's talk about some gear and gear management. It's very important that you make sure you get all of these bags. You can buy more bags. That's right. There's more and more bags that you can get. And of course, that's with resources and gold, right? You can get the gold and then buy the bags. Make sure you do that. Make sure you get max of them because you're going to need them to, to get all of the gear in the right places. I'm a little OCD. I like my gem specific places. I like my rings in specific places and whatever. But make sure you get your, the maximum amount of bags because you're going to need them. There's a lot of different gear sets and etc. Now, one thing is all your characters, of course, share this stash so you can, un unless they're wearing it, right? And then, of course, there's something over here called armory. You get in here and that is where you can save your gear set. This was my first gear set for the Barbarian. Take a look. He is uh, the rainbow barb. That's right. <laughs> I love this sword. So I don't know. I love this sword. Even though it doesn't do anything, I love it. So you can you can save all these different gear sets, right? And then you can just easily switch from one to another. Why would you want to do that? Well, because each gear set has a specific combination of things that you may need, right? So that's where you can save your outfits. All right, cool. You can save your outfits. What's next? Let's look at the artisan, some of the, some of the artists right now, this guy right here, the blacksmith, super important, obviously to make sure that you repair your equipment, right? Everybody knows that. Now, if you get equipment, honestly, if you get yellows or blues or even some at this point, once you beat the game and you got a bunch of legendaries, notice that all of these are either legendaries or green, right? What are you wearing? They're either legendaries or green. So at this point, all of the greens and yellows, I wouldn't sell them at this point. I would actually forge them and salvage them, I mean, to get a bunch of stuff that you need. Now, if you salvage them, you're going to get resources that you need later to get things. So that's what I do. I salvage them. Legendaries, you can salvage them as well. I mean, if there's things that you don't like, you don't need, there's doubles and wool and so forth. I mean, you can get rid of them and get a whole bunch of things to get forgotten souls and all that. And then right over here is where that would add up, right? Your crafting materials that you would need um, for specific things. So, okay, that's your legendaries. Now, as far as legendaries and ancient legendaries and primals and all that, let me tell you about that. And when you get into a specific thing and take a look, let me actually make that right there. So let's take a look at this sky splitter, right? The sky splitter right here, this legendary axe, that is a legendary axe. Notice it says legendary on it. Now, the one right next to it, the one that's equipped that's on me right now, it's an ancient legendary. One, because it says it's an ancient legendary. Two, because he has a gold border around it. Notice the gold border around the item. That means it's an ancient legendary. It's just a little bit better than a legendary. And then there's a primal. A primal is an item that has this red glow around it. That is basically a max stat, a max stat ancient legendary that's the best possible item that you can get of course that's what you want to go for but as far as the difference between legendary and ancient legendary there's a gold thing around it you want to have more obviously ancient legendaries so i wouldn't get rid of them or if you're going to break them down make sure that you keep the ancient legendaries on you those are the ones that you want to equip on your on your guy so that is the difference between an ancient legendary legendary or primal right everything else uh now green what's a green a green is a seasonal item right that is what i was telling you about those are sets of gear that you can combine together if you notice they have a whole bunch of different uh, there's a primary right and then there's a secondary and then there's this immortals king's call that's the gear set if you put all of those things on a set of two will give you a call of ancients and they'll last until they die a set of four will reduce the cooldown of your wrath a set of six if you were all six of them will give you uh, all of all of those benefits for wearing that gear set that is what a seasonal gear set is that's the difference between an ancient an ancient legendary a primal um a seasonal and then a regular stuff now greens and yellows that's your regular garbage gear Honestly, either those either sell or better yet, you want to make sure that you uh, break those down for the materials that you want. That's gear. Now, let's take a look at 
gems. What are gems? Right, so gems, if you go to your jeweler, now as far as the jewelers or anything, or artisans or whatever, any kind of artisan, you have to upgrade them. So when you go to a jeweler or anybody else, you go to train right here and they have to go all the way to max if you want them to make the best stuff for you. So that's important. Now with the gems, what's important with the gems? You have to combine them. That's right, you have to combine them to get the highest possible gems, all right, and they'll show up right here. Uh, there's a little thing right here that says show material you want to put half material versus all and they'll show you only the things that you can make you basically go in here you take a look at that you move it as high as you can you pay the price and then that will make me that stuff so and that's what you do you kind of go through and make the higher stuff the high and then more of uh, higher things and get higher things and so forth and so on it's basically you can go from like an imperial emerald to flores imperial to flores royal emerald and and so forth that's being the best one right so and then of course they cost more money but the higher they are the more gems you combine into higher gems the more stuff they're gonna give you when you add them to your equipment that's right if you notice some of the equipment has sockets those sockets ooh, a royal one nice see that one right there once you go into the royal ones they require the the flawless imperials and then they require some of the death's breath which is by the way you get from doing um your regular rifts and just out there on town when you beat things you get you get that you want to save those things okay so get some of that so yeah, so you want to make sure that you add those to your equipment because they have sockets, right? These sockets basically uh, enhance your equipment. Now, specific sockets can do regular gems and then other sockets can do legendary gems. Your legendary gems you can add to your rings, to your amulets, and um, that's about it, rings and amulets. Now, what's a legendary gem? A legendary gem is super, ooh. There we go. Let's do some of these. That's the flawless world. That's the best one. A legendary gem is something that gives you an extra power. It's not just a gem. It doesn't just enhance the gear by giving you more strength or dexterity and whatever. It gives you more power. Now, if I add a red gem to my gear, I'm giving it more strength. Notice if I look at this red gem right here, right? It gives me weapon damage, it gives me experience, and it gives me strength. That's something that you would use for a barbarian, right? Because if you want to, let's say, make him stronger. So notice all of my gems are red at this point. That's just because I'm trying to increase my, my damage and my strength on my barbarian, so I add them all red. Each gem gives you different things. So if you go hover over a specific gem, like you'll notice that the, uh, the, the green gem or the emerald will give you critical hit damage, it'll give you dexterity, it'll give you extra gold for monsters. So you kinda, you wanna mix them up or you wanna do them all the same, it's really up to you. That's what I mean by the depths in this game. You can just go on and on and on by adding specific gems, by doing things to them and all that and so forth. Now that's a regular gem. In your amulets or in your rings, you can get a legendary gem. For example, notice right here, I have a gem of officious toxins. So this poisons all enemies and hits them for 3,500% uh, damage for 10 seconds. And all, all enemies take 10% increased damage when they're around me. And they deal 10% less damage. It's a really cool gem, right? Now that gem... The legendary gem, it has, it has a rating on it. Notice that mine is rank 31. Some of them you can get all the way to rank 100 or rank 99. And how do you rank legendary gems? There is only one way to rank, to rank a legendary gem. And that's to do a greater rift and beat it in a lot of time with the specific things, right? And then you get like a, a, a chance to upgrade your gem once, twice, three times, four. I think the maximum is five. So you do have to do a greater rift beat it do well on it and then you get to, uh, a few chances to upgrade that gem a few levels and you have to slowly do that until you get it to level 100 because at level 100 it gets you know all of that and there's you know uniqueness to it it's really cool you can add those to your amulets to into both rings those are legendary gems versus the regular gems that we're doing right here these guys when you add them to your other equipment they basically give you more stats they give you more and more stats and that's what you want to do you want to get more and more and more stats to get stronger and stronger and stronger and we're gonna finish up all of these gems as i'm telling you about we've been jamming is that crazy do you are you following me still awake i was like man what is this the gem that and gem this and you put these gems together and all that so we got the gems let's take a let's take a look at the next thing
All right, so we looked at the specific artisans, right? We looked at our blacksmith. We realized that we can totally go in there. We can take weapons apart for parts. We can forge other weapons. We can get plans that we find out there in the world and teach them to build us things, right? So we can forge any kind of weapons and things like that we want. We got into our stash and our armory to make sure that we can save all of our stuff there. We talked to our... Let's try it to our um, gem, to our jeweler guy. We can upgrade the gems and talk about that. We found out about the legendary gems, right? And how do we do legendary gems? We do them by doing rifts and greater rifts. What do we do that? Right, we do it right here. We talk to this guy, Orc, who is gonna open up this, this Nephilim Obelisk, right? What is this Nephilim Obelisk? When you open it up, that's gonna give us a chance to enter a rift or a greater rift. The only way to do that, of course, make sure you beat the game. This will not be open for you until you beat the game. So you have to beat Act 5 to do it. And then to get the greater rift, you first have to beat a Nephilim Rift by yourself, right? So you can select a Nephilim Rift or a greater rift, get in there. Now to, to get into a greater rift, you're gonna need a token or a something called a keystone. That's this guy right here. It's called the greater rift keystone or one keystone sometimes you get two by beating a nephilim rift and that'll allow you to, to get into a greater rift once the greater rifts they have different difficulty levels that's right the higher you go in the difficulty the more uh, the more the better things are the better the more gems you can upgrade like the better chance you have of upgrading your higher level gems and so on and so forth you do not want to go to the highest difficulty at first start semi low start where you're comfortable and work your way up depending on who you're with i mean if you're power leveling and you have a couple of friends that have been doing this whatever nice and easy stay behind they're just gonna blast right through and you just pick up all of the rewards and extra and all that stuff and get in and slowly and surely you will gear up and get like we talked about and you start upgrading your gems adding them to all of your gear right so upgrading your legendary gems and the more you upgrade the higher strength and all that stuff you get and the more you'll be able to handle higher and higher rifts and do them more comfortably stay where you're within your comfort level don't go too high to where you're gonna get smoked because it doesn't it's just not gonna be fun for you and make sure you will have fun right that's what this game is all about fun so make sure you do that so that is your rift and your greater rift now there's something called challenge rift and there's something called an empowered rift make sure you check out my guide I'll put it at the end of this video that'll give you all of the breakdowns into all of the rifts uh, what is the next important thing uh, we talked about, I mean, you can always sell stuff to a merchant, right? You know that nice and easy. You go to any merchant, you can buy or sell things to them. I mean, it's pretty simple as far as that. And then there's something really important, and that's, of course, called Kanai's Cube. I made a detailed breakdown of the Kanai's Cube and what you can do, what you should do with it. The one important thing that I'll tell you right now, you can definitely watch the video and check that out. But as a new player or somebody who just beat the game and needs to know, like, what do you do with the Kanai's Cube? There's only, there's only one thing that I would concentrate on first when it comes to the Kanai's Cube once you get it. And that is to get these skills. These are three passive skills that you can add to your character by adding them into your Kanai's Cube. These are three extra skills that you can carry. What are these skills? Well, those are skills that you can pick up and extract out of legendary items. So for example, let's say you have a legendary and by the way, each one of these slots is for every item. So like th this is for um, a weapon right this is for armor and that's for a trinket or well, like basically a ring or an amulet so let's say you pick up a, a a sword that has this awesome ability to summon a murderous herd of cows there actually is a staff like that there's also this big huge yeah so there is one right so you pick up the sword and and this sword, every time you hit it, there's a chance that murderous rage of cows come on. Or if you're a barbarian, you pick up a nice little axe that's going to give you extra extra damage when you're doing the war win, which is a, a, one of the things that you do with a barbarian, right? It's a really cool thing where you're doing this. You're spinning around, right? So, hey, you want to pick that up because it'll give you extra 30 or 40 percent of that in this weapon but you don't like the weapon you don't want to use the weapon or you just want to add that as a passive skill well Knight's cube allows you to add up to three skills to your character i didn't know this at first so i was playing the whole time and there's three extra things that you could just add for free to your character and those three things can be anything that you like out of what you pick up so you can pick up a really awesome a shoulder pad that let's say allows your enemies to explode uh, into a whole bunch of uh 950 damage weapon damage they explode in a fan of knives 
there's a 35% chance that it happens every time I deal damage to an enemy. That's really cool. That was in one of my shoulder pads. I said, oh, I need that. I want, I want to get that. So I put that in. And what happens, this goes into a library, a collection of other skills. And then you can change them. As you unlock them, you can change them and, and, and add them and do all that. It's really cool. You can also take specific skills and put them into other weapons. That's really cool. There's a lot of stuff that Kanai's Cube does. The first thing that's important and the first thing that I would concentrate on is these three skills and basically extracting those three skills, whatever three you want, out of a le three legendary weapons and putting them in here, adding them, making sure that you run with them all the time because it's going to make you so much stronger, better, awesome. I mean, pick whatever ones you want. The possibilities are limitless. Psh, so awesome. Love Diablo. Love Diablo. So you pick your three skills. How do you do that? Well, you see the little book on the bottom right here? You open the book up and then there's a bunch of different recipes. There's pages of them. You can flip through the pages and take a look at all the ones that you can do. The one that we're talking about here is the, ar the archive um, of Tal Rasha. That's right. This is where you extract legendary power. So you need all of these things. You need the legendary item, whatever it is. You, you take a legendary item and you slap it in here. You put it in, right? I'm not going to do this one, but you put it in and then you hit the fill button. That's right. The fill button is all of your stuff. Now, this is right here is all of the things that you need. How do you get these things? You get them by completing bounties in each act. If you go into each act, let me show you. Let me take my sword back right over here. <laughs> put that back. So if you go into each act and you go right here in the center to the waypoint or the map, you'll see that there are these bounties right on the bottom right over here. There are bounties. You have to basically hold them. And as soon as you do that, there's a little arrow that pops up right there on stone for it. So you go there and you complete the bounty. And once you complete all of them on every act, you'll have everything you need for all of these. So you have to go to every act, complete all the bounties in every act to make sure that you have what you need. And that's the Chaldeum Nightshades, the War Tapestry, the Corrupt Angel Flesh, and so on and so forth to be able to do this. Then you put one of those in there. You put, you put your weapon in there and then you hit fill. Now, don't worry, it's going to fill with everything you have, but that's no not to worry. It's not going to use it all. It's only going to use one of each or whatever it's needed, but it's just going to show you that it fills with everything. Right. And then you hit the transmute button. What is the transmute button going to do? The transmute button is going to pull this power out and put it into your, um, your arsenal. So nice and easy. You get that set up and, and then you're good to go. All of your stuff is right here. If you wanted to keep track and see what you have and what you don't have and all that, all of the counts for everything is right, right over here for your, for your bounties, for your crafting keystones and, and the kind of hellfire. Let's try this. That's coming very soon. Wait till you see that. Uh, so yeah, so that's how you do your, uh, legendary power. So it's very important. I would definitely do that next. Get the Kanai's cube and make sure that you pull three legendary awesome powers out of it and add them to it because it's just going to make you way, way easier, you know, as you're playing the game or whatever else. I didn't know that at first. I wish I did. So what do you need to do? That's right. Let's outline. So you need to beat the game. You need to get a Kanai's cube. You need to go and make sure you beat the bounty so you can pick up all of the materials that you need. You need to pick up legendary items. Make sure that you scrap everything else for materials or money, right? Your blues and your greens, uh, your blues and your yellow. Sorry, your greens are your seasonal items that you can keep and put on your guy. You, you make sure you keep your legendaries, your ancients and your primals are the ones that you really want to keep once you get to end game, right? And that's what you want to do slowly acquire more and more and upgrade your build to make sure they have higher stats and the higher stats they have the more things they're going to be able to handle the more things they're going to be able to handle the higher and better greater rifts you're going to want to do so as you sit there and you get that set up you basically then go in and make sure you get the kind of cube make sure you extract the three powers that we talked about that whatever three you want out of the legendaries that you're going to pick up and then you start doing your rifts and your greater rifts that's right you do your rifts to pick up all of the gear and you basically go up the difficulty, right? When you're doing your rifts, uh, as you go up and you progress and you get better gear, you want to start increasing your tournament level because it'll just drop more stuff for you and it'll be more fun for you, right? You do your rifts to pick up your keys. Basically, I like to do it like 10, 15 rifts at a time. I'll just sit there and bang them out and make sure I get the keys so I'm ready to have them for my greater rifts, right? You want to make sure that you have enough. You don't want to do one or two at a time. It kind of breaks your 
uh, breaks your funnel, right? And with the riffs and the greater rift, it's basically a rhythm. You want to kind of, as you go into a pro mode of Diablo, you want to get a nice little setup to where you have a specific gear level and a specific level of torment that you can do, and you can do it in three to four minutes to where you can just go in and start rifting, bang, 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 and just taking these out, getting all of the gear that you need, just rolling and rolling and rolling and picking up the the gear that 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 you're looking for right because there's gonna be a lot of grinding in the game and that's what you do you're trying to grind now the higher you go of course there's caps to this a greater rift has to be completed in 15 minutes they usually say three to four minutes is a nice smooth one where you can do a bunch of them at once so you could just keep grinding and getting better gear and just increasing your strength as you play this game more and more and more to basically increase your efficiency that's what the higher level players are all about and when you are a lower when you're a bit lower level you might want to just take your time or whatever a great a rift you just gotta complete it in less than 15 minutes to make sure you get all of the rewards make sure you upgrade your gems right the gems that you're using the legendary gems that's the ones that you want to upgrade in your rifts and your greater rifts remember the higher greater rift you go the higher chance of the upgrading so if you want to make sure that you have a hundred percent chance of upgrading your gems at the end of the greater rift you have to go to a higher level difficulty level oh those uh, details for that is in my riff uh, guide make sure to check that one out because it gives you all that information that you need but that's the idea the idea is you grind the rifts and the greater rifts and you're doing that over and over again and trying to get better and better gear increasing your difficulty levels getting higher and higher and higher there's also of course seasonal challenges that come around every season as they come and go there's grinding with friends and on and so forth you can do this yourself you can do this in a four person party I mean the bigger the party the better right so you really don't want to play by yourself normally if you don't have a couple of buds or friends you want to make sure that you add somebody from um, you know from out there from the uh, open of the game and play with them because it's a lot of fun Diablo is much more fun when you're playing with other people do remember that the other people that join you make the game much hot harder so if somebody who's a super high level decides to join this game that means that you're gonna be dealing with much harder enemies just FYI other than that, like I said, grind, get through the game, and that's how you enjoy experience of Diablo. Before you get to all the crazy highest level where, where you're trying to compete and get on the leaderboards and try to get to the highest and craziest levels where you're grinding for one specific gear set, make sure you have fun, make sure you blast through and, you know, get through and do your stuff on Diablo. Even if you die, <laughs> even if you have to do it again, it's super fun. I hope you enjoy it. And one more little hint, since you made it this far in the video and you actually got to almost the end, let me tell you one more thing that you want to do. You want to make sure that you get into the, uh, the secret levels of Diablo. That's right, Diablo has all kinds of awesome secret levels that a lot of people don't know about. You get to those secret levels by opening up portals, by having specific weapons that when you can go and engage like ghosts, or having certain things that you can add to a nice cube and use them. There are many ways to open up specific portals to all kinds of amazing places. I'll actually be bringing you some of their secret portals and how to open them and how to get into these awesome secret levels like a treasure level or a rainbow level or a level full of murderous cows that's right oh there are so many awesome really exciting levels in Diablo make sure to stay tuned for that I'll be bringing you all that information as we play the game together if you have not played it yet or if you played it and never knew about this I'm making sure that I'll be bringing you that and we're gonna do that right here with uh, together on the video I sincerely hope that you enjoyed this video I hope you learned something today this is the beginner's guide to Diablo three i hope it helps you if it does and if you like this video make sure to smash the like button subscribe if you haven't folks because i have so much more diablo 3 com content coming for you i also have diablo immortal and four diablo four that's right did you see the trailer Woo! diablo 4 content coming as well as soon as the game releases i'm super excited about that super pumped you should be as well make sure to stay tuned for that and uh, subscribe and check out this video right here this one is really cool and i'll see you there